Hello, can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Uh, so this is my uh, presentation for um, an app I want to develop in the future. So I'm designing this, this application right now. And uh, it's called Supply Space. So this is the uh, this is a supply chain management software, which uh, I'm targeting for smaller companies. Um, so I have to move the overlay. Um, so the uh, so so the vision and value proposition for this company is that um, I want companies that want a functional solution to their supply chain problems. Our supply chain management software will help your companies, uh, companies flow of go goods become seamless. With the added benefit of an in-app marketplace, we, uh, we make the purchasing process become extremely easy and time-saving. So this is the uh, value proposition that I would be giving the investors uh, in the future. So there's uh, several issues that I will be uh, trying to solve with um, this uh, supply chain management software. The first of them being uh, inventory management issues. So a lot of uh, smaller companies, especially in the food industry, um, they face they face a lot of issues with uh, their supply chain because a lot of their food, uh, a lot of their food either gets wasted or just lost. So, uh, in in the last year, almost six hundred and twenty million dollars worth of food has been either wasted or um, lost. Um, so the food industry is a pretty big industry over here. Another big industry would be the e-commerce industry as uh, things tend to get lost or misplaced since there's so many different um, different uh, shipment carriers like DHL, UPS and all that stuff. Secondly, uh, there's cost management issues. So the cost management issues, um, this um, the application will use uh, machine learning technology to forecast your future uh, orders and it'll be based on your inventory. So it'll make sure that you don't run out too quick so that you don't have any stock left or you don't have too much stock that you can't sell enough. Um, then the next thing is with the asset management issues. This is, this is similar, this is basically, uh, there's two physical, two factors to this, there's the physical flow of goods and the informational flow of goods. So there's the physical, which is your day-to-day -day items, which are being like delivered. Um, and then your informational stuff is online. Like you're, you're keeping like uh, your inventory and all that. Then you have the sourcing and supplier, ma supplier management issues, which is, um, basically which comes into purchasing. So every um, company has to purchase raw materials or um, from another like uh, from another company. So an example of this would be if an Italian restaurant wanted to go and buy uh, tomatoes. So they would have to look at different suppliers in the area and um, they would have to get a quotation and inquiry and get all that. So uh, making it easier to do that. And then there's warehouse management. So keeping everything organized and in check and then logistical issues. So um, all the flow of goods is like going through. Okay. And then um, this is the solution, which is um, which is the application itself. Um, we're trying to make it modern with like modern technologies using React and um, React and uh, like cloud-based tech, um, cloud technologies. And uh, it's for small businesses. So we're gonna try to keep it cheap and affordable because uh, 
supply chain management softwares can tend to be like super expensive up to like $100,000, $200,000 a year. Um, so the key features for this are the marketplace, which is going to be a place where companies can list some of their products, which other companies who, you, who are using the app can see. So it creates a network of, um, it creates like a network which uh, different companies can buy from. And this will be region-based. Um, then there's uh, forecasting, which allows you, which the company, which the invent, oh, sorry. Um, so, so, sorry, one second. Um, this forecasting will allow you to um, um, manage your inventory and cost. So it'll forecast it for the future based on the past uh, experiences. And uh, analytics is another key feature we want in our application. So this will be so that data is clear. You can easily read the data and analyze what's going wrong with your company, what's going good with your company. So you can fix any issues you have in the, in the logistical or supply chain. So the customer we're fo focusing on mainly are smaller businesses that have a revenue of, okay, that's supposed to be five, five million, um, five million dollars. Sorry, but that's a typo. Um, yeah, so five million dollars. So because I want to keep the annual fee of the business around uh, ten to ten thousand dollars or five thousand dollars a year, so a company can afford it. Um, and bigger companies will have the resources to buy this, but our our businesses are. Uh, businesses focused for smaller businesses at, at, the, at the beginning. And um, the targeted area for all this would be uh, New York, Chicago, Dallas, uh, Austin, and Los Angeles, which are the most uh, popular cities for small businesses and which are growing right now. Um, and then the targeted industry would be the would be the retail industry, food industry, consumer goods, electronics, and e-commerce. Talked about that earlier. This would be uh, an example of a person who would use our application. So this is a person I interviewed this week. Um, so he has been using the SAP supply chain, which is, um, which is like an industry standard all over the world. Um, this, uh, this software is like extremely detailed. It's been going, it's been running for years. And uh, yeah, it, it has a lot of features which we want to implement as well. So the key features he really liked was um, the forecasting because since he's a procurement manager, which is purchasing. So he, he was mostly into, say, uh, into buying stuff. So it, it, it saved him a lot of time as the application just told him how much to buy. And yeah, so that's a goal of mine to do with our application as well. Um, so the marketing and sales plan for this, uh, sorry, application would be, um, uh, I would be, so there's uh, two, uh, so there's uh, four platforms that I wanna really market on and social media. So I want YouTube to have all of them. So um, influence. So I want ads on influencer. Um, so supposing there would be. Uh, sorry, I'm just losing my words. Um, tech YouTubers would be one of the uh, like YouTubers that we would like to partner with as we see there's a lot of connection of users that would be interested in buying our software. Um, so YouTubers such as like MKBHD would be one of them. And our YouTube would provide tutorials and such. LinkedIn 
we would have um, blogs and some sort of advertisements on there. Twitter, we provide updates. And Facebook, we, we would have ads as well. And uh, we would also give a trial. So you could, uh, you could see the application before actually buying it and try to implement the basic features. And after you, but after you buy the application, you would get all the features for it. Um, there's three revenue streams that, that's, that I've planned for this application. So the first would be an annual subscription, which is the primary way this app would be earning money. Um, so this will vary on like the amount of users um, the company will have. So if there is 10 users, the, or like if a company has 10 users, the price won't be that much if a company, if a different company has 50 users. So the price will vary on the number of users. Also another monetization we could have for this company would be the service fee. So the service fee would be only applicable with the marketplace transactions that go through. So we'd be taking a small cut of those uh, transactions. And then uh, the last one is an experimental addition, which will be a future add-on add to the, to the app application. So this will allow other like third-party applications to integrate with our application and um, which will make it better. Like you could, supposing you could um, implement Salesforce into this. So you could see all the members of your team and see everything in, in one software, basically. Um, this is the roadmap for development for the, for the future of the company, which I wanna continue this after um, this, this class ends. So I have, um, I'm gonna start developing this in, in uh, June and try to look for investors as well. And then um, have the basic features developed and look for a bigger team on August if, the, if we do get the investors. And then um, we start website development so we can actually, people can actually start purchasing and looking at our product and uh, the development will continue and uh, yeah, December just keeps going, acquire more team members since this is a pretty large project. So yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Abby. Um, Meg, let me go first. I, I have a couple of questions. Um, um, so Abby, one of your earlier slides listed six issues and uh, that you hope that this software will address. I guess, I guess you know, this was, I know that you, you know, when we've talked that one way to look at this presentation is as a sort of trial run for a in, in investor identification, shark tank sort of thing. Yes. So if I was sitting uh, on the panel and deciding whether to give you any money, um, mm -hmm. I would probably ask you, well, um, I know you specified small business and you have a cap there of 5 million uh, revenue, but how, how confident are you or how confident should I be if I'm going to invest in, in your project that what you're offering is any different from what's already on the, uh, on the market? I mean, uh, the differentiating factor with the application, which is the main part, which I'm trying to do is the marketplace which I've researched a lot of the, a lot of these apps and um, purchasing is always like an, a hassle to, be, the, to people and it's always an issue. It takes a lot of times you have to call up several different people. Uh, you have to get quotations from a lot of people. So this will make it easier as, it, as you can see all the vendors in one place, you can just start a chat request for an inquiry. It's much easier than going, calling, that's one feature that's going to be different in our application. And it's going to be much more focused instead of like having all the features, like having like 
general ledger managed uh, accounts and like we we'd have the focus features more than like uh, the features you need just uh, to get by at the start, but expand in the future. Okay, so my second question would be: um, It seems like the success of your project depends on having a, a, a lot of users um, so that you talk about a network and, and people being able to you know yes. talk to each other and 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 obviously yeah. in the supply chain there's different steps so probably different companies are uh, involved in each of those steps so your problem I would think is getting getting started because if you don't have that network right off the bat yeah you know so what am I, how, how am I going to benefit from it? Yeah, so um, additionally, I forgot to uh, mention this. I would also be going and in like pitching companies the marketplace so they could put their own stores on there even if they're not using the software. So supposing, I don't know, uh -huh. like Target, you could, they could have like a store there for like business. And these are business to business transactions. So these are like more bigger amounts. So like, you'd be buying like a uh, hundred thousand of tomatoes. I don't know, something like that instead of just like one or two. So these are more like uh, just business to business transactions for companies. Okay, so that that sounds like it might answer my question. Other, I mean, if I'm a company, you know, I've got proprietary information that, you know, that I don't want my competitors to see. And it, it sounds like maybe, you know, some things that I wouldn't want other people to, other my competitors to see, might be accessible if I use your site, right? Or um, am I wrong? Um, the prices won't directly be listed on there. It'll it'll show the vendors, and then you start a chat with them, and then okay. Instead of going calling and finding, it just makes it easier. You have the vendors listed, and then you can start a chat or like start some like some sort of text with them. It won't list okay. the price on the on the thing, yeah. Okay, all right. Last thing, I, I just wanted to say, I like your idea of, of, of letting people experiment with this and, and, and have it on approval, so to speak, before they actually commit to, to buying, uh, you yeah. know, buying a part of it, buying into it. So I thought that was a good idea. Anyway, um, and one last thing. Uh, it's very ambitious, right? I mean, yeah, this, I'm sure is, a, this is a very, if I want to develop <laughs> this, I'll need a lot of people and it's going to be expensive. I think your timeline might get pushed out a little bit. I thought yeah. your timeline was uh, pretty, was even more ambitious. Anyway, yeah. uh, nice presentation. Um, uh, I, I think you got something here yeah. and, I, and I, hope, uh, I hope you follow through like, like you intend to. So Meg, I'm ceding the floor. Thank you. Um, so, Abby, I thought this was really interesting. I, I had the same um, word that um, Stephen did, which was ambitious. Uh, I like that you've identified a problem and are, um, you know, really outlined what you would see as the solution. Um, I guess a couple questions I have. Uh, you know, it, it seems like you would move fairly quickly in your timeline to looking for investor support. And I guess what I would wonder is, have you done like the customer discovery piece? Um, have you done the pieces, um, some of the beta testing so that you can feel confident about, um, you know, what, what you've outlined is great, but I wonder, do you have a product? Um, do you feel confident about the product that you could then say to investors, here are the results, here are the projected earnings. I'm wondering, have you done that? Um, so I haven't done the financial projections as of yet, um, but I will be doing that for the product paper. And I have a bunch of like diagrams and stuff made, but there's no actual product yet. I'm just researching the idea of this application and how it could help. Because to be honest, this project is, much bigger than like what I can do myself. This will require like a team of like 10 to 12 developers to make, and it'll take like a year or two to even develop this. Um, so this is like a future plan of mine, which um, <clears throat> I, I can get in touch with investors through like my family with um, 
so that that's that's another thing which I will be doing probably this summer. Um, yeah. Well, I really like what you've outlined. Um, you know, I look forward. I hope you'll keep us posted on on what you plan to do next. I think, as ambitious as this is, um, you may find the right team of individuals that want to take it on and and pull you along with it. Um, with yeah, I I have two of my friends who are graduating this semester who are who will be probably who said they would help me with this uh, during the summer. So hopefully that goes goes through. With this. Well, best of luck. Um, I really enjoyed hearing your outline. Uh, you've got a lot there. All right, thank you. Does anybody else have any questions? Uh, no, I do not. Okay. All right, then being mindful of time as we always have to be, we'll go to Alessandro. Oh, goodness, that's me. Uh, that's you. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, all right, in here. Excellent. No, nope, that's not the right slide. All right. Excellent. Can everyone hear me well and stuff like that? Awesome. Yep. Excellent. Yes. Cool. <laughs> All right. Um, so just before I begin, in my description, I did accidentally type uh, 1997 instead of 1977. I promise I know when Star Wars was released. I'm not that young. Um, <laughs> we'll get there. Um, anyways, uh, hi, my name is Alessandro Martellero. And yes, this is actually for real my capstone project. Um, the entire elevator pitch is right there on the screen. Uh, the Star Killer is an emo rock musical adaptation of A New Hope. Um, and if any sane person were in that elevator with me, they'd be pushing the emergency alert button as fast as they possibly could. Um, but in case you didn't think it would get any crazier, um, along the way here, we're going to have to talk about the Grim Reaper, Ratatouille, and a broken gay relationship. <laughs> so with all that out of the way, uh, I'll get started and I promise it'll make more sense. Um, so just a little background on me and like why I'm deciding to do this ridiculous thing. Um, I have my professional concentrations are in theater and game design with a minor in music. So music and theater and specifically musical theater is very much like my wheelhouse and kind of what I want to do um, post graduation. Um, in that field, I've served for two years as RIT players music director um, slash assistant music director. Um, RIT Players is the student-run theater group on campus, and for two years I was in charge of basically anything musical within their productions, whether it be um, teaching actors um, vocal lines for the musical, or teaching the pit um, the, their music parts, or finding um, musical bits to add to straight plays. That was all my job for two years. Um, and shows I've worked on include Little Shop of Horrors, Theory of Relativity, and The Drowsy Chaperone. Um, I've also twice been director of RIT Players Productions um, at Four Drowsy Chaperone, as well as The Pillow Man, a straight play. Um, so I've experienced not only heading the musical side, but also just the overall vision in general. Um, and I have prior experience writing songs, especially on a timeline. So RIT Players does this really cool thing called the 24 hour show. Um, it's not a show that lasts 24 hours, that'd be insane, but rather it's a show that's built within 24 hours. Right, so everyone in the club is given some kind of theme on Friday night, right? And from there, people will write scripts throughout the night. Those scripts will be given to actors and directors in the morning. Um, they rehearse throughout the day for the performance Saturday night, right? So it's all constructed within one 24 hour time period. Um, it's a little different in the COVID world, but that's not really important. You get the gist. Point being, I've been absolutely insane enough to <laughs> have written a song instead of a script, not once, but twice uh, for this. Um, I did a song most recently um, called The Ballad of the Artistic Director uh, for the theme Inside Out. Um, and the joke was that the uh, artistic directors of the show finally got their own scene, putting the idea of the 24 hour show on its head inside out, um, if you will. Um, and the first song I wrote for a 24 hour show is called Leonard's Lament, um, which was a sad song. Um, about a gay man going over a breakup. And I really cannot say the theme for that year um, if I want to maintain any level of professionalism. So I'll just leave that up to interpretation. But point being, these songs were written 
in an extremely short time frame, like six hours before they had to be given to actors and stuff like that. Um, so I've been able to do songwriting on time crunch, but with all that out of the way, how did this concept actually take shape? <laughs> well, it all started in the summer of 2017. Alessandro was in his hometown of Mishawaka, Indiana, hanging out with his old high school friends. During the hangout, Alessandro and his friends decided to watch the seminal classic 1977 film, Star Wars A New Hope. The group constantly talked over the film, as friends do. Early in the film, the group made a comparison of Luke Skywalker to a 2000s emo teenager. His first interaction to the audience is him complaining about not being able to hang out with his friends. Little did he know that this would start a fire in young Alessandro's mind that would not go away anytime soon. Um, and I've finally been able to put that project kind of actually in place instead of just like a funny joke, you know? Um, so what goals did I have for this project? Well, originally I wanted to have a total of around eight songs. That would be about, oops, sorry. That would be about 30 minutes of music-ish. Um, I wanted like dialogue in between songs um, to kind of help the audience follow the plot. Um, there's this really cool musical concept album called Razia Shadow, which is basically a bunch of different songs. And in between there's like a narrator saying how the story is going. And I think that's kind of a cool um, method of storytelling within like a concept album. Um, there Originally there would be an ideal cast of eight to 10 actors. Um, and the final deliverable would be an edited video production. So we would film like actors like acting this out and then I'll cobble it together. Um, the biggest inspiration for this aspect was Ratatouille the musical, which was created entirely virtually by a bunch of different creators on TikTok. Um, a bunch of people on the app all thought, hey, wouldn't it be really funny if Ratatouille, this like important movie from our childhoods, was a musical? And so they went out and they composed a bunch of music um, and it gained a pretty much insane amount of traction. Um, and it actually happened. So the Ratatouzical was a one night only video event where these songs that people created on TikTok were sung by actual Broadway actors like Andrew Barth Feldman and Titus Burgess and Wayne Brady and also Adam Lambert, um, <laughs> wild stuff. But anyways, so all these actors got into costume uh, and they filmed these themselves acting and singing um, these songs and bits that people had written. And it was all edited together Brady Bunch style um, to create this one like cohesive show. And I thought that was a really cool way to put on a video, video virtual production. So I thought, why not do that? But Star Wars, right? And also by myself and in a semester's time with a full course load while I have to graduate. Um, won't that be fun? Um, so that's essentially exactly what I did. <laughs> um, now this would not have been possible without two uh, really big programs for me. The first of which is MuseScore, which is a uh, free sheet music notation software. Um, sheet music is very much the easiest way to spread music between musicians. And if I wanted to have actual people sing this, um, sheet music was a must. And also Reaper, uh, which is a digital, digital audio workstation or a DAW. Um, this basically is what makes music sound pretty um, an actual like music production um, aspect. <laughs> So the process of making this was definitely kind of bonkers a little bit, um, kind of threefold. First, it was in MuseScore, the sheet music software. There I created the songs for the show. I worked out the instrumentation, like what instruments would be playing what parts. Um, and then I would upload those songs um, to the MuseScore website, which is a really easy way to share what it'll sound like really, really quickly um, to people. And I would send those to actors and I would create PDFs for access of just specific parts. Um, in Discord, uh, the communication app, I rehearsed songs with a cast that I found this semester. Um, of all RIT students, I communicated with the cast regarding any changes that I made to these specific songs. Um, and I also recorded the vocals for the songs. Um, and then in Reaper, I imported the MIDIs, which is like um, just basically a super simple way that a computer interprets music. I imported those from MuseScore to Reaper. Um, and this is kind of what I'll be doing this week, uh, upcoming before the due date. Um, and then I'll produce some polished song sound and then I'll place in the recorded vocals um, and ideally the visuals um, was the plan. So the big question of the afternoon um, is how did it actually go? Because um, we all know that reality is different um, than just what your mind wants, right? 
Um, and so there's some positives and negatives. Positives, rehearsals went very smoothly. The actors were very understanding about the whole entire process and how um, like Rome isn't built overnight, you know? Um, so I think everything, and also they were very eager to learn. Um, a lot of them haven't been doing musical theater in a while. So they were really itching to like learn music again. That was exciting. Um, casting was fairly pain-free. Um, I'll get to that in a minute. Songwriting actually kind of went according to schedule. There was no point where I felt like hopelessly behind. I think I only had to reschedule one rehearsal so that for just for the purpose of I don't have any music <laughs> to teach people. Um, and also everyone was flexible. Everyone was understanding that this is kind of new theater and they'd never done anything really like this before. Um, the negatives, on the other hand, uh, it was a lot of work. It was really, frankly, insane. It was all consuming. Um, and basically any free time that I had went to this. Um, the video aspect had to be cut. Um, instead of delivering a video, what I'll be delivering is just like a soundtrack, basically, um, which I don't think is a huge loss. The video would have just been something cute and nice, but that would have basically tripled my work editing. Um, and that's something I really did not have time for. Um, the songwriting, again, went mostly according to schedule. A lot of it was crunch time and I just, okay, I have to get this done because, you know, I'm teaching it to three people tomorrow, right? Um, so a lot of it wasn't really um, had a, as much care as I would have liked to put behind it. Um, and communication was a little bit rocky. Um, there's always a, a gleeful idea of like, yeah, I'll communicate everything. Um, and then you get to the actual point and it's like, oh no, I'm just gonna send them the PDF like as we're teaching it, as opposed to like the day beforehand, because it was just written like 15 minutes prior. Um, so really like ahead of time communication went out the window and people kind of had to be on their toes, which isn't the worst, but um, not the best either really. Um, so I really learned a lot of stuff and what's listed on this slide is only part of it. Um, rehearsing music over the internet isn't the worst, but you do have to be prepared to do it. Um, so I have a piano in front of me um, and that is what I used basically just to plunk out notes for people, but there was really no way for us to um, do things simultaneously. Like I couldn't play it while they sung because the latency is just too much and that's really not possible with music. Um, so what I did is I sent the like music score links to them so that they could hear it on their own and listen to it on their side without any transmission over the internet at all. Um, and I even sent them a warm up sheet through music score so that way they could do warm ups on their own as well. And I would just use the piano as like a teaching tool so they could hear it immediately um, isolated and then come back to it. Um, so it really isn't, it wasn't terrible, but you definitely had to have as a director and a music director, a lot of prior work put into it. Um, and teaching entirely new material is way different <laughs> than teaching stuff that people know. Um, because I've worked with all these actors on previous shows that I've worked on. Um, and it really is a lot different how you can just go on like Spotify or YouTube and find like the original recording or like cabaret performances of any musical you want, right? And you could just find the song that you need to do and listen to it over and over again. And that's not really a thing you can do with new music. There's no level of familiarity of like, oh yeah, I know how this part goes because you don't, you've never heard it before. Um, so it really is an entirely different method of communication trying to teach people um, new music. Um, music cannot be rushed um, and kind of, oh, well, I guess not. Um, but like there was a level of like, I can't really rush what music I'm writing I just have to let it happen and hope it gets done. Um, and the next point, adaptation is simultaneously easier and more difficult there. Um, it's really easy from the fact that you know how a story goes, but a little difficult because um, with the two songs that I've written for the 24 hour shows, I had make, made those stories up so I could really do anything I wanted with them. If I didn't like how something was, I could just change it. And there was no repercussion because it was my original story. Um, but here I can't really change any plot points or anything like that. I kind of had to fit puzzle pieces the way they were, like I was given like a half completed puzzle and I had to make puzzle pieces 
that fit the spot. And sure, like half of those corners, I could do whatever I wanted with, but the other half, they were already built for me. I had to like fit them in, in the exact notches that were there. Um, and lastly, just sometimes good enough is just that. There were points where I was like, you know what, that music's fine because you really will um, work on something and as long of a time as you're given. Um, and I think I just had to set a lot, like, I'm glad that I had weekly rehearsals because they were like weekly deadlines of, okay, this song has to be done by then. I mean, if it's not tough luck, you know? So I think I just had to embrace kind of the aspect of good enough is indeed just good enough. Um, so here, I just want to thank everyone who is involved in my capstone as a singer. Without them, this project would have never left the ground and I'm really forever indebted to them. <laughs> These are all actors I've worked with before, which definitely helped the process, I think. And I just wanna recognize all their hard work they hear. Um, they're all RIT students. So Liam Darty was Luke Skywalker. Um, he's also on co-op right now, which is really incredible. Um, so he's recording everything very virtually. Um, Kelsey Fober um, as Leo Organa, Quincy Miles Jr. as Han Solo, Dustin Van Kirk as Darth Vader. Um, and then the ensemble is Ricardo Aguilera, Peyton Anderson, Jackie Thompson, and some handsome devil named Alessandro Martellero. Um, so in conclusion, um, the soundtrack ended up being nine songs. So one over my target and just over 41 minutes of music in length. So that's 33% more than I had originally thought. Um, it turns out I just really like making music. <laughs> um, it's um, It was really fun, and I think not having to worry about a visual aspect just kind of let me focus on making the music the best that it can be. Um, and these are the songs um, in order as they would appear on the soundtrack. Um, next week's schedule is, before the due date on May 7th is editing. Um, I have recorded most everyone. Just two more people to go because there were some rescheduling that we had to do. Um, but And then I'll just put them into Reaper and I'll make everything sound pretty. Um, hopefully premiering by May 4th. Um, that is before the due date of May 7th, but May the 4th is May the 4th be with you Star Wars day. Um, so it's really too perfect to not do. Um, so I, it's gonna be out then. And how can you find it? Um, assuming no one steals my tiny URL in the next three days or whatever week, um, it'll be at tinyurl.com slash Star Killers Capstone. Um, and with that, I think I'll, Thank you for listening. Um, hope you listen on May the 4th and I'll open up to questions. Thanks everyone. Meg, your turn. So, wow, um, that was fabulous to hear about that whole process and I'm, I'm mesmerized by it. Um, I don't have a, a, a music background, um, so can't even envision a traditional way in which you would um, put something like this together in such a short time frame. Um, but then adding the additional complication of doing it virtually and on Zoom, um, it's uh, what a Herculean effort. Um, I, uh, I'm guessing we can't maybe hear one of the songs right now. We probably don't have time maybe I, to get to the end. I really tried. I really, really did. Um, yeah. But the two, um, well... I don't have all the ensemble parts, so I couldn't do any song with ensemble. So that kind of narrows it down a great deal. Um, sure. Yeah, and also it's just um, a lot of work and I want to do it kind of all in one chunk. So I don't have right. anything right now. But. Right, 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 I understand. So, um, you know, no, no, no pressure, um, mild disappointment, but I'm going to hear it at some point. So it's yes. fine. Um, so, uh, would you say that you would like to move forward? Um, so I'm curious about two things. One is, um, what is the next thing that you're gonna do? Um, so whether that's job, professional, next personal passion project, and would you ever wanna do something like this again? Or are you just itching to get back on the stage? Um, well, um, I'll kind of answer them in reverse order. Um, I would love to do stage performances again. Um, I miss like r the last in-person show that I did, which was Theory of Relativity. Um, my roommate uh, went to the show and told me that me directing the pit was the happiest that he'd ever seen me, um, which is wild because we've been roommates for three years now. Um, so he's seen me a lot. Um, so I really would love to like teach a pit again and like, lead a pit. Um, I don't think like virtual performances are cool, but they really do not like replicate like live theater and how that feels. So I'd love that. Um, as far as what I wanna do, um, 
the answer is not this. Um, I think this project will say how it is once it is turned in, um, mostly because I do not, I, I fear the lawyers of the big mouse. Um, <laughs> um, so uh, as far as what I want to do, I think I want to um, go into grad school actually for teaching um, and like teaching music to people. Um, I'll keep like theater as like a fun thing that I do, or but um, I don't think that like, and maybe I'll like look into jobs for it as well if, it, if I get opportunities to, um, but really, especially um, COVID-19 has really affected the theater industry. Um, it's been like regional theaters are closing down left and right. Um, and they really do not have the money available to hire a fresh out of college person, right? So I think I'll just um, go into like teaching music, which is kind of what I want to do with theater anyway, and that just like spreading like my passion to other people. Um, and that's what I want to do, yeah. And I actually think that there's a huge transferable skill set from what you've demonstrated here to, to teaching. Um, mm -hmm and actually to a lot of different fields. <laughs> um, but really nice job. I enjoyed that. Thank you. Um, so Alessandra, I, uh, I, it's also a wow for me to maybe, maybe wow squared. I, I thoroughly enjoyed your presentation. <laughs> and for once, I'm, uh, I, I really don't have very many questions. One, one little technical detail that I just wanted to check on. Uh, do you, do you, have you still, um, incorporated the storyline between the between the songs are, are we going to get that to still i don't think so um like that's just kind of an ad there will be dialogue within the songs but i don't think in between them um oh. because i think the main point of the dialogue in between the songs was as like a visual segue um <clears throat> and also um not to sound lazy but i really do want as little work on my plate as possible because the editing that I will have to do is enough for about three people. Um. <laughs> so, so you're going to assume that we we are, we all remember going to the movies in in 1977 and and, and seeing the plot, or or will that be yeah. clear from the from the song sequence? I think <clears throat> the plot will be decently clear. Um, I think the way that I want to do it as well on, um, like the release is have it as like a YouTube link, um, have the visuals be like lyrics on screen. Um, and then the captions, like the YouTube captions, customize them to be kind of like, um, like director's commentary type of deal. Um, so that can be like, oh, this song is about blank to kind of lead people in. Um, so the, I'm, I'm not a theater person at all, but I would <clears throat> assume, and I think you just al alluded to this in, in what you said to Meg, that <clears throat> there's got to be co other copyright issues here. Um, one, it's kind of a parody. Um, I'm not taking myself seriously at all. Um, but two, it also is a student project that I'm not looking to make money towards. And I think that's the big thing is I'm not trying to make money off of this. I it see. is just something that I'm doing for fun and it's funny. Um, but if, so, if, go on, go on. Well, no, that's really it is um, I think the big issue with people is they try and make money off of it really, really quickly. Um, so, right. And there are millions of parodies off yeah. of films and actors, et cetera, that yeah. Exist. Okay, so that so that isn't an issue. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So you you know, you never know what's around the next corner. And maybe regional theaters are closing down right now, but mm -hmm. you know, two months, three months from now, maybe they'll start opening up again. I mean, you just can't tell that. So yeah. um I hope you don't. I mean, you're obviously brilliant at this, so I, I you know, I don't. You know. haven't heard it yet. I, I would wait to say that uh, until you hear it. Okay. Well, you've raised <laughs> my expectations. I won't tell you that much. <laughs> anyway, I really don't have any questions. I thought it was a fantastic project and a fantastic presentation. So thanks very much. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah, I really enjoyed your presentation. Thank you. All right. Okay, uh, so Abby, Alessandro, and now Stephen. Take it away, Stephen. Okay, give me one moment. Can everybody hear me okay? 
Yep. Okay. Yes. So I'll Looks get started. Good. Okay. So hi everyone. My name is Stephen Young, and I'll be pre be presenting my video game business planning project. Here I'll be showcasing my research and the development of two games that I worked alongside with. So this is an introduction of me. So, so I have a concentration in exercise science, which I, I thoroughly enjoy. And I have a minor in business management and immersion in communication. And I worked alongside Caleb Bacario uh, last year and we decided to create a video game called Beat Chase. And then further along the line, we also developed a card game called Rudin. And so the inspiration comes from uh, helping others who are sedentary and to motivate them to start being more active through the use of virtual reality. So as technology keeps growing rapidly, lifestyles have become more and more sedentary. The impact of inactive life is one of the major health problems in the world and is linked to many chronic diseases, including mental disorders, metabolic syndrome, and even cancer. Although physical education in schools have addressed this issue for decades, our society is still overwhelmingly sedentary. And in spite of being properly educated on the benefits of regular exercise, one of the major factors that contribute to increasingly sedentary lifestyles is a lack of motivation which is a major barrier in creating new habits. Although technology is partially to blame for this, there are new ways for exercise to be implemented and for other users to engage in healthier form of play. And through the use of virtual reality, um, virtual reality has become a booming industry in the last decade, which makes virtual reality different from other gaming platforms is that VR allows for actual physical movement while being completely immersed in exciting, engaging gameplay. VR technology also allows the measurement of movement, which can contribute to the assessment of the physiological response. And virtual reality has also induced fitness that cannot be only a potential strategy for reducing sedentary lifestyles, but also improving mental disorders like depression, PTSD, and anxiety, and not to mention VR is a good method for improving health as well in rehabilitation in populations that are often seen in older adults, stroke survivors, and veterans. Furthermore, devices are very easy to acquire, easy to use, and create motivation. And in my project, uh, my goal was to create a business that focuses on virtual reality uh, in the industry. So the first uh, topic of research that I did was the location of where I wanted to start uh, my business. And I decided California because it has a booming economy and it has a very big diverse uh, inf uh, industry where um, California gets its thriving economy from being host of two cities that have the, are the capitals, which is Los Angeles, and San Francisco. Los Angeles is at the entertainment mecca of the world. And while San Francisco and the surrounding Bay Area has the grasp in the tech industry. And according to Fora Financial from 2018 to 2019, California's gross domestic product has gross, uh, rose from one, 127 billion to over 2.7 trillion. And if it wasn't uh, if the state was its own country, it would be considered the fifth largest in the world in its economy. So another uh, topic of research is what type of uh, legal structure that I want to create this business in. So there are uh, four different types of businesses so called sole proprietorship, partnership, a limited liability company, which is the LLC or a corporation. And among these four, I decided that the LLC was a much more efficient process for me. To create an LLC in California, you must file articles of organization with the California SOS. And I would need to appoint an individual agent to process all my information, also could be known as a registered agent. 
And also, in addition, while we're not while not required by law, you could also prepare a operation agreement, so they would know what type of business that I would be doing. And also, a big um, topic was business insurance. So business business insurance uh, can protect your business and personal assets from different unexpected disasters such as personal injury, lawsuits, and natural uh, catastrophes. A, an insurance agent can also help you explore the different coverage options and uh, could include general liability, uh, different claims regarding bodily, bodily injury, pro uh, property damage, cyber liability, which is a main focus for me to cover litigation and settlement fees, settlement fees following a data security breach. And also a big um, a major component was to create a business account to track all our expenses and income. And this uh, helps us uh, manage our finances a lot easier and quicker. And another uh, information topic that I needed to discover was uh, the difference between full-time workers and part-time workers. And so the difference between those are uh, part-time employees work fewer hours than full-time. Uh, the, the Fair Labor Standards Act also uh, acknowledges that part-time workers uh, work fewer than 30 hours per week, but uh, that also depends on uh, uh, different states where in California, 30 hours per week and lower is considered part-time. And also um, I need to understand the benefits between full-time and part-time. So for full-time, um, they have to work 40 hours per week and they have to, we have to offer uh, common benefits like vacation times, additional paid time off, health insurance, and employer requirement plans. So in the beginning, uh, as we won't have as, as much um, finances and expenses to give out, we will probably be looking for part-time workers just to save costs. And then another uh, topic was the overtime for law, overtime laws for part-time and full-time. Um, and an employer, we have to understand the overtime laws and a exempt employee is, uh, a full-time employee is paid on a salary basis. And so we have to understand how much federal wage they have to get. And regardless of the employee status, which is for full-time or part-time, we have to withhold the payroll and income taxes from the employee wages, such as federal income tax, social security tax, and Medicare tax. And so there's a lot of different uh, expenses that go with hiring an employee, and that's the topic that I was also researching. So for the marketplace, uh, we decided to look into Steam and the Epic Game Center. And so there are uh, dozens of digital distribution platforms on the PC, which many of these channels come with limitations, such as Origin or Uplay, which are other two other platforms, which we can't, um, ruled out because they have a lot of bad uh, reputation with them for being uh, un unfair to developers. And for other, our, our main source of sales would be considering Steam or the Epic Game Center. So I did some research and Epic Game Center has a very uh, small market, but their quality is very high. And in order for developers to submit their games, they have to be approved or reject, uh, ha they have to be approved or rejected and this process is very tedious. And we understood that our game isn't in the final product stage. So we decided to go with Steam. And Steam has made it way more uh, straightforward 
because self-publishing was made a lot easier. Uh, Steam has a process where they would charge a fee up to $100 for each game that you submit to Steam Direct, which is also non-refundable. Non and and if your product makes at least a thousand uh, dollars in gross revenue, they would take a percentage of it. So there are a lot of advantages in publishing on Steam, which is that it's fast, quick, and very and it has very few drawbacks. Although there the marketplace is very very big, that almost anybody who plays games would know where Steam is or how to how to download Steam. And so our, our model, our business model is to build a community. So community is a very big uh, major factor for the, our, the success of our game. And you don't need millions of subscribers or likes on Facebook. We just need like a small um, community that uh, enjoys the game for its quality and it's for its playability. And we want to support multiple languages. Um, the types of languages that would be interested is um, Mandarin, a Chinese, which is a very big marketplace, and English, of course, and Spanish. Those are our three main um, languages that we want to support. And we want to have engaging gameplay and visuals. So we would uh, keep, independent, keep independent developers and trying to innovate our, our uh, product. And a strong visual st style is also important. Uh, so I'm going to go back a few slides to present some of the videos that I have. So, so these two photos on the right are, are uh, we started developing almost a year ago and our button is, uh, this is something that we created and you can see the picture on the bottom, we were testing. And then for this video I will be showing is a demonstration of the game of what you would see. So as you can see, you can push the buttons and you can set the, the timers on those buttons or you can have like a medium, uh, in, uh, intermediate difficulty, easy or hard difficulty, depending on how fit you are and how uh, engaging you wanna be. And you can do this anywhere in your room, outside. It's very flexible and very fun. So, and so for the next video is a demonstration of me playing the video outside. This is at the RIT facility in a racquetball courtroom. And as you can see, I created, you can expand the, the, the X and Y axes as far out or in as possible. So you can really design the play environment however you want. You can make it very, um, sorry. Okay, so you can design it however way you want and to make it way more difficult or to make it a lot easier so you don't bump into anything. And so for our card game. Steven, we... can, I, can I just interrupt? Um, it, it's 1.30, so if you can wrap this up in the oh, next couple okay. of minutes, that would be good. Okay, gotcha. Okay, I'll just go over some of the designs and I'll be done. So for our card game, we designed a more medieval fantasy uh, look to the game. This is a design that we paid an inde independent vendor on Fiverr to do and make for us. And also all the, our name, Beat Chase and Rudin is also not copyrighted. So it's, no one has taken those names yet. And so I, I did the research for that. And this is where your cards would be collected. This is more of an early game stage, which is why it's so simple. As of right now, we're just focused on the card design. And then this is how the game would look. And these are my work cited um, and all the information that I 
uh, gathered is from these uh, links. And that's my presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank, thanks for wrapping it up, Stephen. So, so it's, it's you know, from, from my point of view, maybe from Meg's too, uh, it's very interesting to, because uh, a, a number of students um, uh, for their project, they, a, a lot of them come from game design and, and a lot of them, a lot of students have the notion of going into business using their game design and what they've learned in game design. And projects, uh, a lot of projects are about designing a game and some projects are at the, the end where, the, where the, the, the game is already designed and, and, and ready to go to market. So, so the, 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 it's a, more of a business plan. And you seem to be in the middle. Um, and so, you know, it's very interesting to see the different phases of, of, of the evolution of, of these sorts of, of, of these sorts of, sorts of projects. I, I, you know, I was pleased at the end that you came back to the, uh, the, the, what you had started with, which is that how you might use a virtual reality game to help people who are otherwise sedentary or, or somewhat sedentary. So I, 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 I was wondering when we were going to come back to that. So I was very pleased to see that you, you did come back to that in the end. But so I'm not asking any questions, I guess. But so what you did in this project basically was the game, you already had it in, in process and you haven't quite finished it, but, but that's going along. You, you already knew what it, what it was going to be like. What your project was, was focusing on how you were going to move to the point of Assuming the game was done, how are you going to move to the point where you could take it to market in, in terms of an LLC, right? Correct. So yes. that was that was what your project was, how to, yes. how to do that. Okay, all right. And so Sorry, let me ask you this. Clear. No, it, it was clear. I'm, I'm just, there are different phases of, the, of these sorts of processes. So you, you had a sort of unique phase, I think, at least in my experience. So are you... You know, I think it was Abby who had a timeline. Do you have a timeline in mind uh, where, where oh. you're taking this? I mean, where is it going to go after you graduate? Okay, so currently uh, the timeline really depends on the development of the game itself. And so Beat Chase is almost finished and we're, and our Rudin, which is our card game, is also is in its middle of its phase. So I wouldn't publish that game at all right now. But for Beat Chase, I think for that timeline over the summer, I think we are going to visually update the entire like aspect of it to make it look nicer. And I think the the inner workings is all there. And so I think this could be done in August. Like I could fully publish it in August. And wow. I think okay. it's a very realistic possibility at least on the Steam marketplace, because it's so efficient and fast. Okay, so you've got that down. So, so I, I got from the video uh, with, with the, um, the, the first video you, you showed with the buttons and all, and then you playing in, in the uh, in racquetball court. Yeah. But how, how does the card game, how would the card game work in, in, in terms of visual, uh, virtual reality? Uh, so the card game is more of a standalone game because it's just another product under our okay. right. uh, company. And it was just something that came up because our friend was very interested in card games. And I worked alongside him with all the game functions. And then we decided to work together as a team. And so it was more of that. And I didn't want to like just not put it in into the project because I felt okay. like it was still a major part of it. Okay, so that wasn't re that's not related to virtual reality. Right, and okay. our main focus is more geared okay. towards virtual, virtual reality. Last question, since I know next to nothing about virtual reality, I mean, I, the, the video that you showed in, on the racquetball court was great. It showed exactly what you were talking about. But let's say I don't have a racquetball court. Can I play this? game like at home someplace yes, i mean yes yeah. so you okay. can adjust the height of your ceiling and you can adjust like the box that you want to play in so okay. and you do not have to like jump like i do so you could just be like kind of standing there moving side to side you don't need those major movements um it's very flexible in your play space and that's what i want to gear towards it 
Okay. Well, you were definitely not being sedentary in that. Right. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed that. Thanks very much, Meg. No Thanks, Stephen. Um, and thank you, Stephen. Um, so I really enjoyed that. Um, actually, the way you answered uh, Dr. Aldersley's questions really helped to put some context for me because I was thinking maybe there were like three projects. So how to form an LLC in a really complicated, um, although certainly very um, wealthy state like California. Um, and then the development of um, what I would actually describe as maybe a hyper casual game. I'm not sure if you would agree with that. Um, you know, the one that's utilizing VR. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the other game, um, which definitely feels more like a, you know, a, a, a Fortnite or one of the other games with, um, with more of a blue storyline. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess a, a couple questions um, slash statements. One is, um, um, have you heard of Aesthetician Labs? Um, Sam Camerata uh, is the project manager and also a soy salam of the team that um, that published the um, the garbage plates uh, garbage plate game for Rochester. Um, I'm afraid I haven't heard of them. Okay, so if you just do like a quick little Google okay. search um, or just in search in the RIT um, search function, um, Sam Camerata um, or the garbage plate game, um, that would be a great resource for you. Um, so Sam and their team, Aesthetician Labs, they've been publishing hyper casual games. Um, they actually um, have formed an, uh, formed an LLC and she mentors a lot of students specifically soy students that are interested in doing um, similar game type work. Oh, okay. So it's really more of a recommendation just to touch base with somebody um, who's been through all the things that you're talking about wanting to do um, and really would just be a great advocate for you and someone that could give you just a lot of good information and good things to steer clear of. Uh, how do you spell her last name? It's C-A-M-M-A-R-A-T-A. Okay, thank you. And it's a they. Um, oh, okay. And they are part of a, a three-person team um, called Aesthetician Labs. Um, and they're currently uh, working for a publisher and, and getting more hyper-casual games out. Um, but I would really encourage you, I'd be happy to make an introduction, or they are so receptive um, to RIT and soy students that if you just wanted to email them or connect with them on LinkedIn, um, they would just have just fabulous information for you um, and just be a great resource. Yeah, I'll definitely be interested in asking her a few questions. Yeah, definitely. Um, I really enjoyed the presentation. Um, the additional uh, questions and the way that you handled them um, provided some good context for me. Um, and I, I hope you'll keep us posted on, on how things turn out and what right. your steps are. All right, sounds good. Any other questions from anybody? Uh, no, but I did want to say um, regarding the garbage plates game is that there is an arcade cabinet of it in um, the Magic Center, which is pretty yes. cool. Yes, it's right. Well, at least it was right by the stairwell. It's still there. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> OK, everybody, um, thanks again. It was a great session. I enjoyed, thoroughly enjoyed all three uh, presentations. Great work. And now all you have to do is, uh, was, uh, well, in Alessandro's case, he, he has a little bit more than just papers to write. But, uh, but we do expect two papers from everybody. And